on the edge. On the edge. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. So it's good thing we're not on the edge. Right. Yeah. We're on the edge. All right. We're going to get started. Can you all hear me? Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. This is a panel on the high-speed broadband in California Libraries project, which many of you in the room are very well aware of. And it's been long in the making. Years and years and years and years. I started um, three years ago. I did the needs assessment. My name is Chris Goodhart. And I am the director of the Broadband Library Initiative with Scenic. And then my co-director is Linda Crow at Khalifa. And we have a whole project team that's working very hard on it. Susan Hildreth, Paul McKinnon, um, just all kinds of great folks at Khalifa and also at Scenic. And as of today, I was just saying, we have about 124 library jurisdictions in the pipeline. Now, for some of them, connectivity is a year and a half out. But the process is underway. And as you well know, it's, I did an analysis. It's like a 14-step process. Well, my, my job today is really simply to introduce the panel. The way we're going to organize the session is each person is going to speak very briefly, just for two or three minutes, to talk with you about how they envision the future in their libraries, both in terms of the technological challenges they have encountered and will be encountering, and also in terms of patron services and how they're able to serve the community and engage the community. Then after each of them speak, we want to spend most of our time on questions. And I'll moderate the questions. So you can just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. Um, we are scheduled for a half an hour, but there's not a session that is following this session. So if we want to go a little longer, that's fine. Or if you want to speak to any of us individually afterwards, that's also fine. So you probably know folks here as well or better than I do. But um, starting at the far end of the table, we have Stephanie Beveridge. And she's the director of the Huntington Beach Public Library. And then sitting next to her is Doug Mason. And he's the systems manager, our um, technologist in this group, uh, Buena Park Library District. Then sitting next to Doug is James Ochner. And Oxner. 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 And uh, he is uh, the director of the Sutter County Public Libraries. And then Heidi Delamore is sitting next to him, the deputy city librarian from San Jose. So those are our panelists. And you guys can begin. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll kick it off. Hi. Um, uh, just a little bit. Uh, um, Huntington Beach um, was in the first round um, for the scenic library project. Um, we're still in the pipeline. We're this close to connection right now. So um, we're just waiting on working out some details between the two providers, the previous provider, AT&T, and um, the incoming one. And we keep getting little surprise delays, but we're this close, really, really close. Um, the process has been pretty good. Um, and we're very, very excited. We're basically maintaining costs, but going to be getting an incredible increase in speed. Um, so we're really looking forward to that, particularly looking forward to not having to answer the question, is there a problem with the Wi-Fi at 3 o'clock every afternoon? Um, yeah, and, and it's going to make s a, such a difference at our branch locations. We have five locations. We have a large central library where people expect the Wi-Fi to be like that. But then we also have these four little libraries where people still expect the Wi-Fi to be, you know, right there, right now. And, um, and because of the way our network was originally crafted, some of our branch connections were just pitiful. So this will make such a difference. Um, and, you know, looking ahead, we've, um, we've always been kind of trying to keep uh, focus on what we could do more, how we can engage more with the community, provide more information. Um, there's some really exciting new things out there for libraries. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be doing the Career Online High School program. We just launched that. Um, having the kind of speed that we're going to get through Scenic just makes sense to support that kind of program. Um, at uh, ALA Midwinter, I heard about a really interesting new kind of online university type of program called Peer to Peer um, University, and they're doing these learning circles where you can set up a learning circle at your library and 
basically conduct college classes on site and with the kind of bandwidth that Scenic is going to provide us you know, on the CalRen network, we could actually seriously look at that. And that, we have a community college nearby, we could partner with them and maybe kind of craft some sort of interesting educational collaboration that would enhance the offerings in um, our part of Orange County, California. So we're very excited about those possibilities. Um, I'm, and also I'm really seriously excited about providing greater speed to access some of our new digital resources that we have. We've got Hoopla, we've got um, Total Books, we've got all of these things and with more speed, that should make it easier for people to find and access all of those services too. So it, there's a lot of, I think, really terrific potential. And if you haven't, one of our vendors out here has a really cool little video streaming system that's very affordable. Um, and um, they're right outside this door, uh, like <laughs> NSTAR, something like that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and it really, they're do, they already do lectures and, um, uh, and streaming services for medical practice. But they've got this new little system that they're they're launching, and um, I want one. And if I if I have one of those and the the CalRen network speed, I think we could do all kinds of things um, at our libraries in Huntington Beach that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So it's all very exciting. Stephanie, you get a commission. I I smile well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And again, I'm Doug Mason from the Buena Park Library District. I'm just uh, slightly north of, of Stephanie and Huntington here. Um, we're also, just kind of like what she said, um, very similar in our steps. We're um, slightly closer because we did get our IP ranges uh, just actually before I left last week. And um, so, you know, I have to deal with that and making all the changes. I wanted to, do want to say the process has been, um, and also I am first year, we are first year. Uh, the process, although it's taken a bit, has been really, really smooth. Um, there's been jumps and hurdles and things that, you know, you, can, you come up against that are normal, fighting with bureaucracy or whatever. But um, as far as the tec technical things, and that's kind of my standpoint as a systems manager, um, it's been sweet. I mean, the scenic people and the Cal State Library with the grant have been extremely helpful. I was guided the whole way, even when yeah, I, you know, was tearing what, what's left of my hair out. Um, just one call to these people, and I got answers, and they did things for me. One of our biggest uh, weights was for the trenching. Um, they had a trench probably, I don't know, gosh. It was from basically from about Knott's Berry Farm all the way down to our library, and it was great because we had the palma cut up for like two or three weeks. It was the first time we had like all these workers out there tying up traffic for something besides knots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it kind of felt good. And, and uh, we uh, recently got the uh, scenic engineers uh, sent me all my training materials I'm online with their, um, actually the monitor for the network, which is really a sweet deal for any of you who actually have an interface. I'm the only person, I don't have an IT department, I don't have a city, it's just me. So tools like that are very, very valuable. But uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. So Sutter County Library is on uh, the Scenic Network. We, uh, we uh, started in January. Um, I think we were supposed to go on in December, and as I was telling uh, a couple of the other people on the panel here, everyone went on vacation uh, in our IT department right about the time that we could have gone live. But uh, I, I said, well, I guess I can wait a couple more weeks after uh, waiting a long time so uh, it's it's really been worth it there have been some really uh, interesting things that have happened around the library well we we kind of celebrate every little thing that we could see that was that was going on like uh, we saw them working out on the street and we'd run out and take pictures of them and then then the fiber was a little, uh, sticking out of the ground and we ran out and took pictures of that and then they trenched and brought it up to the building and everything was an exciting moment for us and I just kept thinking well you know they could just keep going today and just it would all be hooked up so um, those were all very good things also I think the support the support that uh, we had from uh, Khalifa and from Scenic um, it made the process a lot easier than I thought I'm I'm not somebody who loves contracts um, but um, it, it went really well working with um, our uh, county's uh, county council and, um, 
and their ability to work with me and with Khalifa and get answers really quickly uh, really made the process, uh, you know, one that was kind of painless for me in a way. Um, mostly for me it was uh, being impatient and uh, just wanting it right away. Uh, some of the things that we're looking forward to uh, now that we have a high-speed internet is uh, I'm kind of using that to leverage uh, some uh, new equipment in the library. So actually the county is uh, finally looking at replacing our, all of our computers because we have a reason to. Uh, and also our friends of the library are interested in uh, helping to fund equipment for an innovation center. So we're hoping to uh, build an innovation center. Kind of in the middle of our library we have um, quite, a, quite a large main reading room and some uh, wasted space, I think. And so we're just, we're going to uh, put together a center that is kind of a glassed in area that uh, people can use to collaborate on projects or if they have a presentation that they're working on or they want to invite a group to come in and, and hear what they have to say. They'll have a space to do that that will be equipped with everything that they need. And um, that's one of the things that we're really excited about. And, and also um, a computer lab for uh, classes that will uh, tie into our, uh, our ESL citizenship program. We have uh, recently had quite a, an influx of uh, people from Afghanistan. Uh, we have a, a large number of uh, men who were interpreters for our troops or translators for the troops uh, in Afghanistan who have uh, uh, come to Yuba City and uh, they had to leave their country because of the danger and now they're looking to um, find ways to, some of them are still looking for jobs, some of them are just finding, trying to find ways that they can um, uh, really figure out the community and it's been, and it's been really interesting working with them and now we have some tools that can really help them instead of saying well yeah, our internet is probably not as good as what you had in Kabul. So <laughs> now we have something to show them. And, and, and like we were talking about before, uh, you want to show what you have on your website at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, let me show you a printout on a piece of paper. This is what our website looks like, you know. We don't have that moment where, that we have to deal with that anymore. So there's some really exciting things, I think, that we have ahead of us. and. Um, and now everything we went through to get there is kind of, you forget really quickly any, uh, anything that was painful. So anyway, we're uh, very glad to be here. Hello, everyone. Oh, let's see. Hello. Uh, San Jose Public Library uh, is joining the scenic project in year two. So we've just completed our contracting and we're looking forward to, to getting connected. We have uh, 23 locations. We'll be opening our 24th location next month. Um, and we're in somewhat of a, a unique situation because our main library is operated in partnership with San Jose State University. So interestingly, we are, our, our Libraries are already, our internet is already powered by the Scenic Network, but it's via the San Jose State University uh, relationship with Scenic. We don't have a direct relationship with them. And so uh, by, by joining Scenic ourselves, we'll be connecting uh, to Scenic for our branches. We'll have that direct relationship with Scenic, and we'll maintain our internet relationship. Uh, uh, San Jose State University is essentially our ISP at the main library, and our services are very enmeshed there and intertwined, so we'll be continuing to get internet service uh, at the main library from through our San Jose State uh, relationship with Scenic. Um, we have a number of, of really exciting projects uh, on the horizon that I think this will, this will be able to support. We are developing a workforce center at our main library and complementary programming at our, at our branches. Uh, our newest branch, we're building it with um, uh, teleconferencing, uh, video conferencing, uh, 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 study room that's equipped with video conferencing um, boards and equipment. And I think to be able to have this sort of connection to really support the kinds of, of um, 
drop-in interview sessions that we want to be able to to host will just be amazing. We're also developing a uh, a mobile maker space. We're calling it the Maker Spaceship, and so to be able to see what that will will look like to take that uh, out into the community and, and essentially have a, a in effect a 25th location. Um, there's all kinds of exciting things. Even just some more practical nuts and bolts uh, applications, we have uh, video displays in all of our in all of our libraries that um, cycle through information about the library. Um, they're not currently hardwired, but we're looking at upgrades to make those um, operate on Wi-Fi and then to be able to to stream um, programming, to be able to stream who knows what. I mean, I think we we're just our, my mind is kind of blown when I think about all the opportunities. It's we just need. To get it turned on so then we can actually think about what we can do with it. Well, this is the time we've set aside for questions. I'll, I just have to mention that um, San Jose Public Library has ordered 20 gigabits of connectivity, which I, I'm almost certain makes it the highest bandwidth of every library in the country. Because we did some research last year, and from what we could tell, there wasn't a public library connected at more than three gigabits. Now, that may have changed since we did our research, but it's pretty exciting to see what that level of connectivity will bring. So as I said, this is the time for questions. And I really want to invite you to ask any question. It can be nuts and bolts. It can be future possibilities. It can be hard. It can be confused. Um, because it's new for all of us. So, so we're figuring this out together, what it means to put a library system, a statewide library system, on a research and education network. Um, it's, it's new work for everybody. So raise your hand if you have a question. People in the back, come on forward. We're really glad you're here. If you'd like to sit down, you're welcome. Questions? Yes, Chris. have uh, just our main branch and then we have three rural branches that are pretty small and uh, in fact none of our rural branches are even as big as this room uh, and so and they each have a gig and yeah when I started working with county IT they said you're giving a gig to those little branches and I said well yeah why not and and they said you're gonna blow the windows off the building it's like, it's amazing so but you know, we don't know what a gig will mean in five years. It might be really normal, and so I don't think it's overdoing it. And um, and in terms of working um, like with our IT staff, that that was something we hadn't done before a lot. We had um, just someone on our library staff who kind of kept everything maintained, and we'd never really worked with our county IT. But um, I asked them to come in, and they took care of all the those questions and how do you uh, you know make sure that you're not losing pieces anywhere and I just asked them to kind of take it over and they were really interested because it was something new to them and they were kind of they were having fun looking at what we had in the libraries and and so that worked out really well for us So I'm going to um, be, re I've got a request to repeat the question, which I'm going to be doing. And let me just note that the question that um, James was responding to was about library branches and what the experience of connecting branches has been like. Yes, go ahead. And say, if you could say your name too. Yeah. Programming with the traditional and traditional um, uses of libraries. 
So that's Mary Miller from the Exploratorium, and she's asking about equipment within libraries that can allow streaming and other uses of broadband. Um, I can respond to that because um, I, I mean I'm a little bit different. I think uh, I have a very large central library, and part of the central library has um, a group of meeting rooms and a 319 seat theater. So our theater has complete sound system. Yeah, it's a full on theater, and it can do anything from a play, musical to a ballet or a concert. So um, you know, if we want to do something on a fairly grand scale, we have the capacity to do that there, and it's off by itself. So it you know it's um, very manageable in terms of um, how it impacts the rest of the building. Um, our, we also have seven meeting rooms of varying sizes, and most of them have either screens or some sort of sound equipment, or we can bring sound equipment in. So we've got a lot of potential, a lot of potential uses, um, and right now we have issues with our connectivity. So I'm envisioning all of those meeting rooms being even more in demand and more active than they they are currently without the, the high-speed connection. Um, my branches, on the other hand, are tiny. Um, very much like, um, yeah, I mean, most, all, yeah, you could put three of my branches in this room. Um, yeah, the fourth one is a little bit larger, maybe twice this size. Uh, yeah, so um, what, if, what we're going to do with the high speed there is going to be completely different. And um, training and any of those kinds of interactive things would probably take over the whole place. But... Um, I think we can manage it, uh, and you know, it's just going to be a, some logistical issues. Yeah, for us, um, we aren't at that state yet because we haven't gone live. We are a single entity, so we just have the one building. It's uh, fairly large, but most of our programs do occur in an auditorium, so that's been one of the questions, even on a smaller scale, not you know, streaming notwithstanding, um, how to break that place down into different types of rooms. So we. With the scenic project um, now upon us, and the idea of the streaming, and you know, I've been looking at all these different things we could do. Even the uh, little toy she wants to buy, she yeah, can stream. Out the yes, outside. <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have been going out to bid to get concepts on what we can do with the auditorium area. Um, so I can see where that would be a question. That's how we're going about it. Really quickly, um, the the library has changed. I think so much in recent years that the, the noise issue isn't uh, one that we worry about as much. Like during the day, it's usually pretty quiet. Um, you get to 3 o'clock, it's loud. People know that. Um, they don't come in expecting it to be quiet usually. And then in the, in the summer, our Thursday nights are just wild with, we usually have entertainers and jugglers and loud music and people are still sitting and using the computers as if nothing's going on. It's really kind of interesting how that happens. But. Yeah, at San Jose, most of our most of our branches are about eighteen to twenty thousand square feet, and so, and we, as I mentioned, we're just uh, finishing our last our last library, which was part of a big uh, bond project. So our buildings were really conceptualized with this notion of different spaces for different types of use, and so we're lucky to have uh, designated quiet study areas that are enclosed. Uh, we have meeting rooms, we have uh, community rooms, so we'll be able to. Um, utilize those spaces for different types of use in them. It's quite interesting, this project it provides a window into how the nature of libraries are changing. So I saw a gentleman here with a question and then you. Go ahead, sir. That's Lauren Herring from Cinegrid, and he's asking about the nature of streaming and what that really means, both in terms of content and also process. I think one one thing that's interesting to think about in terms of streaming is I, I think a lot of the examples at the conference go instantly to these big, large-scale uh, 
ki kinds of programs, but I think it's also incredibly useful at the small scale because looking at San Jose, we, have, we will soon have 24 locations. You may have a program that may be a real niche type of program that would be interest, of interest to a small group of people, but they may not have the transportation uh, capabilities to come across town, but if they could go to their local library. I'm thinking in particular of our language programs. We have uh, programs in 17 different languages, and so if you wanted to come to uh, a, a language class, a conversation class for a very specific language that is being held across town, well, maybe you could go to the branch that's half a mile from you and go into the meeting room and still participate in that conversation class like you're in the same room with the other people. Yeah, we're even contemplating streaming, um, and recording, you know, and broadcasting our story time programs because we have we have incredibly popular story time uh, at our central library, um, and it's always full, and not everybody can get in, and not everybody can get to the central library, and we figured that if we have this capacity, we could possibly have the central library story time available at branch locations, or either uh, even at preschool locations, and in the and maybe possibly cooperate with the school districts um, to share that with them as well. So, I mean, the, the, we're looking at that. We've also been experimenting a little bit with virtual author visits at the library right now, but our bandwidth has created some challenges with that. Um, with the, the enhanced broadband, we, we, we would like to really actively in, expand and enhance that capacity. I think that would be a great way to bring um, a variety of, of people in and foster the reading culture in our community. Um, there's the, the possibilities are so great. I mean, like these, this peer-to-peer -peer university thing that's out, coming out of New Zealand um, would actually allow a, a library to consider becoming a kind of mini university, a, a peer university, um, and you know, and the streaming just adds an element on to that educational function. So um, it's very exciting. Not an, on, uh, All we're, right. I I'm trying to think of what we would do. I uh -huh. think for me it's almost uh, once we get the bandwidth, yeah. it'll be interesting to see yeah. what our program directors come up with, you know, where they get the ideas. I saw yeah. something interesting a few months ago that, I mean, it, it sounds so off the scope for libraries, but it brought in a lot of applicant people signing up for library cards and such when you're looking at attendance. And it was the World, the, uh, World Soccer Cup. Yeah. And I don't remember who it was doing. I think it might have been Stanford. Yeah. And they were using their scenic connection. They decided to, to do the two weeks there. And it apparently brought in a lot of people and other libraries mimicked it. Yeah. And they ended up with high um, enrollments. You know, it's kind of interesting, the spinoffs. Yeah, I was kind of bummed when the um, Exploratorium Eclipse um, uh, viewing was available, you know, was, was streaming, and we just couldn't take advantage of that at Huntington Beach because our capacity just wasn't there. Um, it's those kinds of things that would be really nice to be able to to bring in too, you know, and have a special eclipse viewing. Uh, you know, any of those kinds of things would be um, another way that we could really, you know, bring and enrich our community and provide different opportunities for different kinds of educational experiences, so. Yes, sir, you had a question. So this is a, a technologist, Todd, from a county IT department, and he's talking about small branches and what they're able to do with a gigabit. Well, right now our branches are, um, the hours are kind of limited, and so one of the things that we're looking at doing is um, kind of, we haven't really advertised it to our schools and the community yet because we're still trying to get a hold of this and we'd also like to replace our computers before we do that so but some of the things we are our IT actually our IT department actually wants to um, put wireless in so that because the hours are so limited that we could uh, have wireless available even when the library is not open uh, I know that there are some problems with that and, and other uh, with other libraries, but um, we uh, right now some of them the hours are one to five, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's just very limited, 
So uh, if you could provide um, during daylight hours at least some um, some wi wireless connection for people, I think that that would be um, a really good service in some of the in some of the uh, areas we are. One of the towns we're located in has uh, a few issues with. Um, with uh, people being able to connect, or even cell service isn't very good. So it's um, sometimes there are challenges like that. So I think people would really appreciate that. So um, I hope that answered a little bit of the question. Anybody else on small branches? There'll be lots more coming out about that. You know, I was mentioning we have 124 jurisdictions in the pipeline, and last time I counted 264 branches upgrading connectivity in the pipeline. Now, all branches that connect through the main are going to receive some benefit, but in terms of upgraded connectivity, that means there's a whole lot more work to do with branches in the state of California, right? Many years worth of work. Next question. Yes. Hi. Okay, hang on just one sec so I can just, because we're streaming and yeah. recording this. So this is, a, this is a great question about a network management plan from Susie Davini. How do you deal with apportioning the bandwidth? And Todd, you had um, something you wanted to share. Speak a little bit louder, okay, Todd, because we can't hear you. Great, so somebody from the audience was just sharing their network management plan, and now let's hear from our panelists. Well, I think when you go so many years without <laughs> almost <laughs> no connectivity, um, you're so excited to get that one gig that you, you don't think about uh, <laughs> kind of like, let's just squeeze a little bit out at a time. I, we, uh, we did not even consider that. We just said, let's go. We are, we are considering at San Jose, we're considering having a, a set amount dedicated to staff, uh, use a set amount for the Wi-Fi, and a set amount for the, the wired public PCs. Uh, but, but I think we want to use, you know, open the floodgates <laughs> to the extent that we're possible. Ours, ours is a portion that way, too. There will be a staff part in public, right? Yeah, and although I'm yeah. one entity, I'm still looking at it the same way. I'm just opening it full up. Um, there may be a management tool that I'll look at. And, depending on how many lawsuits we get from Paramount Pictures or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Torrenting, but yeah. uh, you know, that would be more application specific, but not as far as make it you know. Yeah, we're sort of, we're, we're in the same situation too, where it's like we've, we've gone so long with um, inadequate service that why not just turn it all on and let it go, and then we'll look at it, you know, and, and if we need to you know, meet her or do anything else, we'll, we'll plan after. All right, another question. Yes. For which library, sir? Oh, sure. So, 
see, this is Assad from Alameda County Library. And Assad, as I understand it, you're asking about the equipment on the library side being upgraded sufficiently to make full use of the high speed broadband. Is that correct? Okay. Well, we. We took full advantage of the state library grant for equipment. Um, my IS department was very excited about that. Uh, they did have a little bit of money. I work, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lucky in Huntington Beach. I have a very good relationship with my information services department. Um, we're both kind of uh, underfunded departments, so we bond. <gasps> um, and, uh, yeah, and, and I'm supportive of what they do, and I understand what they do, so they like that. Um, so uh, when I made, uh, when I, they knew, heard that there was grant funding available for equipment, they were all over it. And we were, we, because of our size, we qualified for a fairly significant amount. And um, they were able to leverage what they had in their budget with that grant doll, you know, those grant dollars to basically upgrade all of our equipment that needed to be upgraded, and even buy some redundancy um, in, in, into the system. So um, that was really, really helpful. And, um, and it, it also acts kind of like a, you know, we've now got a kind of a baseline, and we know going forward, working with IS kind of what our time frames will be in terms of looking at the equipment and doing future upgrades, keeping things on top of. And, and then also this year, we just happen to have a little bit of money to do some computer, computer replacement. So it's good timing from that perspective as well. Um, it's long overdue, but they've always been trying to work with us on that. And using Scenic to leverage and make a case for that kind of thing can be helpful if you're having budget issues. But the grant was terrific. Yeah, Buena Park had a very similar situation to hers. Um, we also took advantage of the grant, and we also combined that with a, uh, a, an amazing discount program they had with Cisco. Yes, the Cisco discount program. So combined, yeah. combining the Cisco discount program for edge equipment, such as the firewall and my switches, um, along with the grant, because uh, neither negated each other out or anything, gave us significant discounts, so was, I'm able to get that up to speed. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't have. We wouldn't be turning on the network unless we had that equipment in place. At, oh, at, at San Jose Public Library, we'd actually, before we began this, uh, before we initiated this relationship with Scenic, we'd been upgrading our equipment. So we were really in a good place to be able to, to just flip the switch. I mean, that's simplifying it. But, but we didn't, you know, there was no trenching yeah. involved. It was much, much simpler for us. Um, and I, th I think what we're, we're looking at is actually a 10 gig connection with a redundancy and then one gig to each branch. So it's not quite 20 gigs to 24 locations. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> oh, yes. Please, Susan. That was for our, our streaming audience. That was Susan Hildreth, who's the executive director of Khalifa and many other things. And she was noting that quite shortly there's likely to be a round, another round of grants specifically targeted to upgrading branches. Let me just, I see you, and let me just do a time check before I come to you. Can somebody tell me the time? Is it, it must be 1 30. Oh, right, 2 08. Yeah. And we're due to end at 2. As I said at the beginning, we, don't, we aren't backing into anything. So we can stay. So if you guys want to stay and, and keep talking, you guys are willing to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's take yeah. a couple more questions. And then, as All I right. said, we're happy to speak no, individually. I'm fine. I'm fine. So let's see. Yes, sir.
kind of like we got the plan and put in it first. You know? And then we started working on the land equipment. Right? Yep. That's what we did. Yep. Yeah, can I? Guys, so that's, um, hang on just one second, that, that's David from Alameda Free Library talking about their approach to upgrading land equipment in their library. And it speaks to this broader point of across California, technical leaders within libraries are, have and are developing significant expertise as to how to receive high-speed broadband and make it available to patrons. I was just going to comment on the um, the edge equipment. Um, although I did get much of the edge equipment now, um, the only thing that I put in place to be specifically for the scenic would be the firewall to make sure that that firewall could handle it. Um, the switches I haven't actually replaced yet because we've still got some, as you said, significant capability on those, and I did get better, far better equipment that I'll be replacing those. But the firewall, we needed that in first. I think that you know that that was crucial. But the rest, you're right. You can, you can kind of I don't know you want to call it attrition it out, but bring bring the others in at a slower rate. I think and it'll still work fine. All right. I think we'll take uh, one more question and then invite you to just come up and speak with us individually. Is there one more question? Does everyone? Ah, uh, yes. That's okay, Lauren. That's Laura, Lauren Herring again from Cinegrid asking about the audio and video infrastructure within libraries to be used for streaming. I think this is another example of where I think we can really tap into our community and our, our partnership opportunities. Um, for example, at San Jose Public Library, we often partner with Create TV, which is our local public access um, station. And we've actually had them come in and train some teens to be videographers for a series of programs that are being offered directed to teen audiences. So we uh, can utilize their equipment, and we, we've purchased some uh, equipment for ourselves. But sometimes the the cultivation and deployment of that expertise can itself be a program. Yeah, and I, I do think that a lot of libraries, like my library, have, with our dedicated meeting rooms, you know, spaces for different uses, have, um, we have a screen in every one of our meeting rooms. We have um, various levels of sound systems in our meeting rooms. One, our theater has a complete theater sound system with a light board and a sound board and you know full tech booth um, our one of our largest meeting rooms has a significant AV um, you know setup with screen head, overhead projector um, yeah and we have a variety of projectors in throughout the, the organization we have a complete sound system in our story time theater so when we do story times there's sound music you know, microphones um, so we have a, we have a lot of infrastructure already in place but by having the capacity to do maybe do more with it um, we feel that we probably will be able to leverage that to get more funding for that um, yeah and hopefully even build more capacity into the organization. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming. As I said, we'll be here if you want to come up and talk with us individually. And what's exciting for me is it really is just the beginning of a very long conversation that we'll be having across California about what this means for public libraries and communities. So thank you for coming. And thanks to our panelists. Of course. Thanks. Uh -huh.